Uh, Mr. Chandra, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Uh, I wonder if we could start by talking a little bit about your earliest days in business. Uh, I believe you started really in the rice business, and I wonder if you could tell us about your earliest experiences as an entrepreneur and what were the lessons that you learned then that might benefit other entrepreneurs today? No, my earliest first experience was to, to pick up my family business of, of converting the whole grain into pulses, into split pulses, dal, as we call in Hindi, dal mill. And uh, when I started that, our family had lost all the capital there was no capital and I was called back from the college to come back because we, they couldn't afford my fees and everything. And so what I did was a very, and uh, market was not really giving us credit. So, but still I insisted that I will reinstate my business, or family business. And when I will go to the Monday and uh, there is a auction of chana, for example, gram. And uh, when my bid would be the highest, the dukandar will not sell it to me because they were afraid that they may not get paid. So they will sell to the lower bidder than me. But I would insist that I said, why are you not selling me? Why are you not giving me? They would say that they can't wait for a long time to get paid. I said, you don't worry, you don't have to wait. You just weigh the thing. Now go to my shop, come to my shop, take your money, then we will take delivery. So what I did was that I built the confidence of the people. And what I would do is when I, if I had creditors worth 10 lakhs of rupees, and if I had 1 lakh of rupees coming as a receipt of the sale, sale proceed, I will go in my, put it in my bag and I'll go to the each shop and if I have to pay somebody 20,000 rupees, I'll give them 5,000 rupees there and then get their signature. So it became my reputation that don't go for recovery of money to his shop. He, as soon as the money comes, he will automatically pay or he will come and pay. So there was no then stoppage. So building the confidence of people was what gave me the learning uh, a great deal. You went and also you were in the rice export business. Which was later on, much later on. Right, and, and uh, in the oil business as well. Yes. Uh, could you help us understand a little bit about... They're all part of the similar thing. I mean, it's all agriculture commodity business. Right. How, how do you think about identifying new business opportunities? What are the things you look for when you decide this is a business I, I want to enter? Well, pulses, oil, rice, they were not new. They were family trade, family businesses. But things that, that started later on uh, were, uh, I think it's just simply uh, be cautious of, uh, be, be cautious of your objective, what do you want to do? And what do you want to achieve finally in life? And uh, I always, pursued in my mind that I want to be either number one in any given business or strong number two. If I'm not either of the two, I will exit that business. And I have exited a lot of businesses which people don't know and people don't talk about. Can you uh, give us some examples of businesses? We used to make, I bought a factory of royal, uh, tools, hand tools making, forged tool making. Uh, we were, we couldn't succeed. We were one of the, we were three or fourth number. So I exited, sold the business. We started molding fiberglass. Uh, we started making bathtub to uh, ceiling fan covers to many things. But it was again a, one of many of us doing that. We sold, sold the business. So like that it was me. How do you evaluate the potential and the risk? What are the factors that you look for? I look for potential when, when there is a demand of that product. There is, a, there is very clearly that there is demand of the product. That has to be first established. And is it better than the product available? If these two match, then I go for it. Uh, SL packaging is a classical example. 
when we set up the factory of laminated tube in India in 1981, whereas this product was first time launched in uh, in American market only in early 70s. Uh, but uh, in India, when I launched the laminated tube business, nobody will buy because Colgate or, or Unilever, everybody said, there are 20 suppliers today. Why should I change to your tube? Because you will be the only supplier. And uh, so, but but we continuously we continued pursuing because it was a better product. It was uh, it was started a, a local brand started using it. Then these multinational had to come. Right. Another very critical uh, success factor in starting any new business for an entrepreneur is your ability to recruit the right people. Uh, because no one can do everything themselves. What qualities do you look for? Uh, I have been poor in that respect, uh, as uh, I've learned over a period of time, over 30 years. Uh, now what we pursue is we, we look for talent. Rather, the talent is much more important for us over the experience or even skills. And my, our belief in our company is that experience can be gained, skills can be imparted. But talents, what you what is required for doing that job, is either you have it or you don't have it. So, could you give me any examples of mistakes that you have made of this type from which you learned? Uh, I would like to avoid that. A lot of mistakes I've made. A lot of long wrong hiring we have made, and uh, we I became I was I was uh, labeled rightly or wrongly as a hire and fire man. Which was not good. Even if you if you take uh, take away the factor of recruitment, in the course of your business career, what would you say is the biggest mistake you have made, and what did you learn from it? God, I've made a lot of mistakes. Not one. Uh, I mean, if every day you are you are supposed to take twenty decisions, and my assessment is. What I have read in some books also that the best decision maker has been 60% correct decisions. So with that sense also, and I don't consider that I am one of the best. So if I take 50% decision right, then also 10 decisions I am making wrong. But um, nothing immediately comes to my mind which is struggling. Um, but yes, one mistake I remember is uh, is 1999 to believe in stock market and get carried away. Right. Well, you you uh, uh, entered the theme park business, uh, and and uh, uh, could you help me uh, uh, understand what was your strategy and and uh, how how you went about evaluating the opportunity and building that part of your operations. Well, SL Packaging was out of the red red uh, by 1987, and I had this land purchased in lying in, in Bombay. So as I was unemployed, so we're looking at what to do next. So this land came into my mind and what can be done over it. Uh, so amusement park is one of the land development permission, permissible in that area. And that's and I felt that there is Bombay City or even India. A lot of uh, people do not have a fair and clean and healthy entertainment. So that's why we built the amusement park. Uh, you all, uh, the the tremendous success, of course, in your career has been the launch of uh, uh, Z Television. And uh, I wonder if you could uh, help us understand the process through which you were able to uh, decide to enter this business, what were some of the challenges you faced in dealing with the government, for example, and what entrepreneurs can learn through your experience in this regard? Well, the first challenge, first, uh, not first, I would say the, the major challenge there was that there was no regulation in India. Or regulation, whatever was there, this sector of television broadcasting was reserved for public sector. 
and uh, when I when we used to see during Gulf War CNN in some of the hotels. So when the advice, legal advice was given, you cannot start it. So what I pursued was that I didn't take that for a for an answer, a right answer. I kept questioning then why CNN is coming, why this is happening. So they said it's foreign country. So why can't I start from foreign country? So the learning what I had, or I succeeded because of that taking no for an uh, not for an answer and kept pursuing kept pursuing and finally got the answer right. uh, what what were some of the elements that you had to put in place to build z to where it is today and what kind of skills in yourself did you have to develop in order to transition to running business of a of a different size and different dimension well, first and foremost, what helped me in, in making the business successful is that I always looked at every program, whichever we used to commission, because I used to commission myself the programs. I used to look at it as a viewer, not as a chairman of the television station. That helped me. And secondly, I had read uh, in in one of the magazine that a very successful di director of hollywood have said that uh, if anybody knows that what will work with the viewers uh, what kind of film will work or what kind of entertainment will work he is fooling themselves so he said nobody knows what will work so i pursued that theory which which made me to be successful uh, Subsequently, the business grew to large size uh, fairly quickly, but at the same time it was growing and then you were growing also with it. And team was being built alongside. Right. Uh, to, to what degree uh, does international competition constrain the kind of things that you are able to do that you would like to do? And how do you compete with really large companies like... No, we are competing with everybody. The, no, we are not intimidated by the big, uh, large uh, multinational companies. What is your competitive strategy? How do you position yourself in a unique way uh, to be able to... Uh, I tell my people that be responsive to the viewers. Be... Uh, listen to them what they are saying. So don't think that whatever you are giving programming is, is the right programming. Uh, I mean, then only you'll, you'll be able to be able, and don't look at what competition is doing. You do your job, let competition follow you. So today, the structuring we did of the businesses from the beginning uh, was followed by everybody in the industry. Today, uh, what program we do, Z does, they, they be, people follow those. If you look at the media industry the world over, it seems to be in complete turmoil. The internet, uh, the absence of uh, uh, ability to charge for content uh, has created havoc even in the places like the U.S. How do you see the global media landscape unfolding? And do you see it as a, uh, where do you see the opportunities in this landscape? Yeah, there, there would be, I mean, the, what, what way the media industry is being run today will not be any more valid for 10, 15 years from now. And uh, we have to be very, very uh, clear and adaptive towards the consumer needs. Money will follow. If we chase money, it never comes. Uh, at, at, at a, uh, in your keynote speech uh, at the Wharton India Economic Forum earlier today, you were talking about uh, the role of media in raising people's expectations and also the fact that this can create discontent among people who don't have high incomes. Uh, what do you think is the solution for bringing about more inclusive growth? Uh, do you have any... See, on our, part, on our part, what we have to do is when we, on one side, when we are showing certain affluence on the t screen and people get 
uh, want to have those affluent things and good things. On the other side, we should also equally be showing them how hard work only can get you these things. There, there are no shortcut to getting these things. So both the things, if we do, we will be balancing our, uh, our job. I have one last question for you. Over your, the course of your business career, what would you say is the biggest leadership challenge that you have faced? And how did you overcome it and what did you learn from it? Um, biggest leadership challenge. Yeah, basically, the, I mean, the... The human resource development is the biggest challenge. To get, A, first and foremost, to select right people, and secondly, then nurture them and, and develop them, uh, which, is, is, which is what is required out of leadership. So we have yet to achieve this excellence in that area. So... I have learned that there's a weakness, but we still have to fix it. We are working towards it. Uh, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Thank you very much, and wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having me.